Hey, good morning. Welcome to the last chapter of the book of John and the last chapter in the four gospels. What a journey it's been. If you haven't been following this, you can go look in the daily devotionals. There's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and even the book of Revelation. That's where we started. And today we're in the gospel of John chapter 21, the last of the gospel of John. And tomorrow we will be getting into Acts chapter one. And so let's get through John and then we'll start Acts tomorrow. Here we go. The Gospel of John chapter 21, breakfast at sea. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to his disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. And on this wise showed he himself. There were together Simon Peter and Thomas called Didymus and Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee and the sons of Zebedee and the two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I go a fishing. They say unto him, we also go with thee. They went forth and entered into the ship immediately. And that night they caught nothing. But when the morning was now, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said to them, Children, have you any meat? They answered unto him, No. He said to them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and you shall find. They cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw in for the multitude of fishes. Therefore the disciples whom Jesus loved said unto Peter, It is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he girded himself in a fisher's coat around him, for he was naked, and did cast himself into the sea. And, on, and the other disciples came in a little ship, for they were not far from land, but as it were two hundred cubits, dragging the net with fishes. As soon then as they were come to the land, they saw a fire of coals there, a fish laid thereon, and bread. Jesus saith unto them, Bring of the fish which ye have now caught. Simon Peter went up and drew the net of to the land, full of great fishes, a hundred and fifty and three, and for all there were so many, yet was not the net broken. Jesus said unto them, Come and dine. And now the disciples thus the disciples thus ask him, Who art thou, knowing that it was and none of the disciples asked him, Who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus then cometh and taketh bread and giveth them and the fish likewise. This is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples after he was risen from the dead. So Jesus seemed to be gone. The disciples went back to their old lives. They returned to what they knew because that's what we do. When we don't know what to do, we go back to what we do know. Jesus showed up to ensure forward motion of their mission and to let them know he loved them. When Jesus doesn't seem to show up for you, here's a question, what do you do? Do you go back to your old life? Do you go back to your old way of thinking? Do you go back to what you know? What do you do when you don't know what to do? They went fishing. So when they had come to dine, Jesus saith unto Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. In other words, do you love me more than fishing? These. And he saith unto them, Feed my lambs. He saith unto him again the second time, Simon of Jonas, lovest thou me? He saith unto them, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto them, Feed my sheep. He saith unto them a third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said it to him a third time, lovest thou me? And he said to him, Lord, thou knowest that you know all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus said unto him, feed my sheep. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, when thou wast young, thou girdest thyself and walkest whither thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hand and another shall gird thee and carry thee wherever you would not. Then spake he signifying by what death he should glorify God. And whenever he had spoken this, he said unto him, follow me. Then Peter turning about, seeth the disciple whom Jesus loved following, which was also leaned on his breast at supper and saith, Lord, which is this that betray me? Peter seeing him saith to Jesus, Lord, and what shall this man do? Jesus just told Peter about his death. And he says, well, what about John? Jesus said to him, if I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to you? Follow me. Saying, why are you worried about him? Follow me. Then went his, this saying abroad among the brethren that the disciples should not die. Yet Jesus not, said not unto him, he shall not die. But if I will that he tarry till I come, what is it to you? If I want to keep him alive forever, what's that business to you? If I want to do this, what's in his life, what's that to you? This is the disciple which testified that these things and wrote these things down. Talking about John. 
and we know that his testimony is true. And there are so many other things which Jesus did. The which, if they should be written, everyone, I suppose that even the world itself cannot contain the books that should be written. Amen. I love that last verse. John Maxwell calls this portion of Jesus' life, life the law of legacy. Just before he left earth for heaven, Jesus invested significant time, especially in Simon Peter. He wanted him to recover from his sin the night he denied Jesus three times. Jesus intended to call Peter to minister and lead. Jesus knew that his time was short, yet he asked Peter three times if he loved him. When Peter assured Jesus of his love, Jesus called him to the natural response, feed my lambs. Love should motivate us to serve. In the same way that the Father sent Jesus to save the lost sheep of Israel, Jesus calls Peter to feed his lambs. Jesus makes his legacy dependent on Peter and the other disciples who picked up the baton and ran with it. What will you leave? What will you leave? What will I leave when our time on earth is through? What will our legacy be? Tomorrow we're going to begin the book of Acts and we're going to see the beginning of Jesus' legacy and how it played out once he was off the scene. But the question goes back to you. What is your everlasting legacy going to be? Here's an idea. Why don't you do a word search on inheritance and legacy through scripture and just see what you find. You might, it might be interesting. Anyways, I hope that you enjoyed the book of John. We just wrapped that up and tomorrow we'll be in the book of Acts. God bless you. Have a great day and bye-bye.